What we shall be facing in a few hours' time is not a man. He is evil. He is the embodiment of all that is evil. He is the very devil himself. Here's your look at the new Star Ace. This is Scars of Dracula, the one-quarter scale Dracula collectible statue. Star Ace is proud to introduce their debut figure for their new line of one-quarter scale mixed media poly resin statues. Count Dracula featuring Christopher Lee as he appeared in the 1970 film Scars of Dracula. This figure captures the beloved movie icon in his most notable role. Before we go ahead and take the measurements for the one quarter scale Christopher Lee Dracula, I want to send out a big thank you to the folks over at Star Ace for sending this early sample copy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do my very best to take the measurements and I'm taking it from the bottom of the base to the very top of Christopher Lee's head, which I think is about there. I'm going to stop the tape measure. And according to the tape measure, we're going to actually work backwards on this one. 55.7 centimeters tall is the statue, which translates to centimeters, or sorry, to inches. I'm so used to actually working the opposite way around. Inches you're looking at 21, 21.9, about 22 inches in height. Now, we are going to be doing things a little bit differently for this review. Normally, with most, most statues, I try to show you guys how everything comes together. How hands go into sockets, how heads go into, of course, their shoulders, and so on. This is a case, actually, where it took me a lot of time, actually, to get things like the head and the hands in place. Don't worry, we'll talk about a little bit more of that as we get to the, those parts of the statue. So... In this instance, I'm actually going to keep all the statue already intact. We'll discuss what really needs to be put together when we get to those parts. But this is a case where, for the amount of time it does take to get the head in place, I've simply just left the head in the socket, and I'm probably not going to go back and revisit how that goes into place, just because there is a lot that's involved. I'm trying to get the head, most especially, into the socket section of his torso. I suppose before we do all of that, we'll have a look at the display stand that the figure comes attached to. When you do get him assembled, he has two rod, two pegs uh, that are going to slide into the holes supplied into the top of the display stand. The front of the display stand does have scars of Dracula with an interesting splattering effect of having the blood running across the lettering. Actually, I kind of would have liked more so, I think, if all the lettering was simply just all red. Um, there is a bit of a breakup where, because some of the lettering doesn't have blood splatter across it, the letters sort of get lost amongst the black display base. I think if they had rather instead painted all of it fully red, with maybe just a little bit of blood splattering onto the side, 
from a distance, I think you'd do a better, it would get a better job of being able to read what exactly it says. And again, it says Scars of Dracula, only because we're looking at it really far, you know, really close. But farther back, it's a little harder to make up just because there is that blood splattering that's across the lettering here. The top of the display stand looks as if it's the interior flooring of his castle. You can see a really nice, rather nice pair of sculpted, shiny shoes. And then the Dracula figure, of course, is going to have a few posts underneath, and those are going to slide into the display stand. I'll just show you how the figure attaches into the base. You just slide those off, and you can see really rather long posts that are going to attach into the holes. The holes are located right at the top there. Um, again, I'm not going to do too much, I think, moving and taking stuff off. Being that the statue is fairly heavy, I don't want it to accidentally... Uh, I don't certainly want to accidentally drop and break the statue, but that's how you attach the feet into the top there. The finishing touches, of course, are to add the cape, but I've just taken the cape off so you can see the shape and the form of the figure here. A very stoic stance. Somewhat awkwardly posed, of course, are the arms. One arm is going to be something that's going to be brought forward. This actually is the only bit on the statue that has posability. All the rest of the statue is fully staction. You can't move anything to it. So like the arm just sort of drapes down to the side of its torso. Again, a really straight, very uh, uh, upright profile for Dracula here. Something also you probably will notice too. Even though the statue is polyresin, the hands and really the head, the all the framework underneath is the polyresin. But over top of it, Star Ace has actually put a real fabric outfit, which is actually a really nice way to showcase the piece. Ideally, they could have actually done the whole thing all in polyresin. But there's something to be said, especially when you get to things like the pants, for example. There's like a natural drape to them that only really fabric could accomplish. Again, you could do this in polyresin, but I think it's much more successful that Star Ace opted to use fabric over top of the body here. To the company's credit, ongoingly, I mean, if you look at any one of their figure releases and now the statue here, one thing that's consistent with all of their releases is that the tailoring for the fabric is always spot on. I did notice, though, that looking at the front buttons here of Dracula, I can't help but think that the buttons are a little too big. I'm trying to go back and look at the source material to see if they did have larger buttons on the jacket, but it does seem like the jacket buttons are a little too big, just a little bit too big. Uh, it's got some nice pockets, uh, appearing to be real working pockets, and he's also got a little lapel pocket up, located up at the top there as well. And as you can see, if we spin the statue around, fantastic tailoring where you can see all the seam work that's been done. Uh, to a, a jacket normally that would be a one-to-one -one scale, they've just managed to scale that down, but still kept it really accurate to a jacket, just in a much smaller scale. Now I'm going to go ahead and take one of the hands off just to show you how it's attached. It actually attaches via magnets, but the magnets aren't a, aren't closely, not close proximity to one another where you just snap them into place. You actually have to slide the forearm further down before it attaches to itself via the magnets there. I guess it's a smarter means because that means it's going to hold on to itself a little bit more than just relying solely on magnets. Now, I did take this hand off. Of the two, it's the easiest of the, of the hands to add and therefore remove. Um, again, you can see the ma magnet is a little bit more visible on this side here. This hand is a little bit more of a problem. Because the sleeve, the cuff of the sleeve and the cuff of the jacket sleeve drapes so far down, the magnet actually is further up here. It's not down here, it's rather up here. So you have to kind of take the hand, I'm just going to use this hand as the example here, and sort of have just to fish it up kind of feel your way along the sleeve to line it up with your fingers, and then it the magnets will take over after that. Again, here's a close-up look at the hands. At the very least, one of the hands. This one does have the ring finger, or the finger ring on the pinky finger. Good-looking sculpt, rather pale-looking uh, pale looking skin tone. Again, accurate to Dracula done a good job there on the nails, the individual four nails, and the nail on the thumb there as well. And again, just to attach it, this one might be a little harder because I'm doing this behind the camera, but you're just going to line it up, attach it to the socket, and then like I said, the magnet will take over after that. In theory, really, the statue has two looks. 
you could drape the arms down, currently what we're doing right now, which does look again awkward until you add the cape. The cape then can drape over top of both of the arms, blanketing over top of the limbs. Or what you can do as well is you can take this arm and in the instructions, you're basically just gonna bring the arm forward and then it, it, it sort of tabs into place it does make me worrisome when I did do it. I'm first bringing it up when taking it first initially out of the packaging. And the instructions tell you just to bring it up and then it sort of pushes and sort of tabs in. But I don't wanna to put too much pressure in it. In fact, actually, when I bring the arm up, it seems to catch itself. When I'm bringing it up, it sort of catches on like a little ledge here and holds the arm up. Now again, this would be probably a little bit more of the preferred pose for many collectors looking to pick up this piece for your, for themselves. Because again, you can have the cape draping down the one side, covering over top of the arm, or you could have the fingers grabbing onto the side of the cape. And then you can have the other part of the cape draping over top of the arm right here as he's pointing out towards his victim. As for the head sculpt, well, the head sculpt is quite good. I like the fact that they've given a bit of a sheen, certainly first and foremost to his eyes, that they do reflect off, give a little bit of life. There's a slightly discoloration that's been added also to Christopher Lee's teeth there, and a little bit of gray that's been added into his hair. Now, here is the big problem when it comes to this statue. We had already discussed, mentioning of course earlier in this review, that they've used, they've utilized fabric. Well, the fabric works well until you want to start putting the head in place. The collar is literally a regular collared shirt. Unfortunately though, the clearance for what the head has to be slid into place, there's a socket and unfortunately around the socket is the fabric of the collar. It got to the point where I was kind of needing to pry away the collar to, a, to provide enough clearance that then the head could slide into place. Eventually what I did do and what I ended up finding out that you could do with the statue was that you could Velcro, unvelcro the uh, the shirt collar, which is actually attached to itself by Velcro, just separate it itself, just pry away itself, just enough that you could slide then the head in place. I do really wish that I could take the head off just to show you how much of a hassle it is to get everything in place. But again, it would be, it took me about an hour or so just to get the head lined up and then fit into the collar. And then even when I got it into the collar, I sort of had to kind of take a small tool and uh, I just kind of pried away the collar around, around the neck area. Once it was in place, just sort of, again, untucking it around the, the headpiece for the head to finally fit in place. Even fitting it in place, it does seem like the head sits rather loose. Um, it's actually quite different from the hands. The hands are magnetized. They attach via magnets, of course, attaching to magnets. Here, actually, for the head, you're attaching it only by a dowel. The dowel goes into the socket area of the torso, and that's what holds the head all together. It's sort of the same way as the feet attached to the display base. Again, the big problem with that, though, is that if the shape is just off aligned a little bit, like I found that the peg the rod went into the hole relatively easy, but it seemed like the shape was slightly off in the socket of the of the torso to what was of the neck. So even like putting the head in place, I feel like the head does wiggle a little bit. You may also find this as well when you get the figure for yourself. Once you, uh, ideally, once you get everything in place, once you get the head all properly wedged in there, let me just spin it around so I can show you what I've done. Again, I've just, I literally just, unvelcroed it, I pulled the collar up as if I was putting on a tie for myself. And then I was able to get the, the neck in of the, the headpiece, of course. And then once that was in place, I folded down the collar, the front of the collar. And then I, again, just took a tool and just kind of fished out any bit of the material that had still been lodged in there when the neck was put into place here. And again, just to show you, I'm bringing the camera a little bit closer here. Uh, there's a little bit of a wiggle, unfortunately, when you put the head in place. I think some of that could probably have been fixed if they had used a magnet instead of a peg. It's interesting, though, that the head uses a peg while the hands just, you know, securely plug into place via Velcro. Again, I really do like the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt is a good capture of actor Christopher Lee. 
even like the skin tone and the slight blemished areas of his flesh is captured here also in the head sculpt but again i just kind of wish i wish it wasn't as i wish it wasn't as loose but like i said it took me probably about an hour or so to uh bring up the collar and again i'll just i won't talk too much about that because we already discussed that but uh, to bring the color up again, just to clear, the biggest hassle uh, when you are putting the head in place is that, again, you're just, you have to pry enough of the fabric out of the way because if you don't, there's not enough clearance for the head to fit into the socket section. Okay, so let's have a look at the cape that comes included with Dracula here. It's a long flowing cape, actually about the same type of material as the pants, the suit as a whole. Interior to that is a beautiful, almost cranberry burgundy color. What's interesting also is that they've added a wire frame. You can bend the cape slightly and it seems to retain its form. Now again, you can't really do too much with Christopher Lee's arms. Their arms other than just really this arm here, which again, you can either bring down like that or you can bring back up. And again, I don't know if you see it. When you bring it up, it sort of catches on itself, catches on a ledge. Sometimes it's a little bit more successful than others. The instructions also tell you when you bring it up to sort of, once again, push it in place. Push it, like I said, take that end and push it into, yeah, there we go, into the socket section. Um, but again, to either way, depending on which way you want to finish off your Dracula, the arm up or the arm down, you're simply just going to, once again, drape that over top of his head and then cascade this glorious looking cape over top of the rest of his body here now once you get the cape back in place you can again where the arm is draped down to the side of his torso you can either bring the cape around i might actually find just kind of tuck the cape around his hand so that he's sort of just kind of holding it back and then once that's in place i'll take the other cape the other part of the cape the other side of the cape I'll just drape that over top of his shoulder and just kind of manipulate that a little bit until I get the desired look I want. And this one, actually this look right here is probably the look I'm going to go with when displaying the Dracula statue. Star Ace, for the longest time, was known for producing high quality 1-6 scale figures with exquisitely painted head sculpts and high tailored costumes. Now they're branching out from the realm of the 1-6 scale market, producing now statues. We've already had a look at the King Kong on this channel before, even though it wasn't technically produced by Star Ace, but this is the first official entryway into their new one quarter scale mixed media polyresin statues. And of all the, the pieces to choose for their first entryway, they produce a Christopher Lee statue you, which couldn't make me any bit more happier because I've always been a big fan of Christopher Lee Dracula. Uh, this one did really turn out quite good. It's interesting though that when you look online and check out the original uh, prototype images of this statue, it actually portrays Christopher Lee with a much darker contrast to his skin. His face looks a little bit different and I have to say that looking at that one and then seeing this one here, I think the one that we physically now get versus the prototype images, I think this one captures Christopher Lee just a little bit better, at least from the paint standpoint. Uh, I also do like the fact that they didn't do polyresin from head to toe. And even though underneath all this is a polyresin frame, I like that they actually did still use their tailored costumes to put over top of it. The jacket and both the pants look like smaller renditions of pants that people would normally wear in a one-to-one -one scale, and the cape definitely does look quite good. I like that they also have added a wire frame that you can manipulate the cape as you wish. The figure doesn't, or statue I should say, doesn't have any posability other than the one arm. The one arm does catch when it does. I mean, you have to bring the arm up. Sometimes it does fall out of the socket and drape back down, but it's a case where, again, you just bring the arm back up and just kind of, kind of press it against its torso to kind of keep it in place. The head sculpt, again, very happy with what they've done with the head portrayal of Christopher Lee. The only problem is the head is a little bit of a finicky uh, feat to get it finally into the socketed area of its torso. Again, the best advice I could probably make as having done this for like the last hour or so of trying to get the head finally in its proper socket, its proper home, is to actually open up the collar of the shirt. It's attached by Velcro and widen the area as best as you can to get the head then back and in, back into its proper placement. Once that is in place, just sort of fold down the collar like you normally would with a tied or shirt wearing figure, and then you're good to go. 
The head is a little on the wiggly side, but it's not a case where the head's gonna fall out of place. It just doesn't feel as firmly planted as say like the hands, for example. I kind of wish that they could have maybe used a magnet, but again, the biggest problem still would have been to try to wedge the head into a shirted area in which the only one time that I didn't wish it was fabric was the area that was around his head. Other than that, a fantastic looking statue, which again is currently on a pre-order. It's estimated arrival time is March 2019. So really as we speak, you'll probably start seeing these ones popping up on online stores. Uh, for example, if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, most online sites have a pre-order on this guy of $419.99. So about $420. Uh, places like Sideshow Collectibles, for example, uh, offer the pre-order uh, where you can pay the installment plans. A lot of websites are like uh, are doing some installment plans. Other sites aren't. So you might want to shop around, find out the best place to kind of plant your wallet if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself. Again, a really nice job. This is, again, the first entryway into their new one-quarter scale polyresin market. And I'm really excited to see what Starius is going to do for future releases. Hopefully, we'll kind of stick to the realm of horror, but certainly it does open the doors for what they can do. Based on this and this alone, what they can do for future one-quarter scale statues, especially incorporating fabric, it certainly will be testing and challenging other companies that have been producing uh, statues, you know, the statue market companies. Starius is now kind of throwing their hat into it. And I'm really happy based again on Dracula, what they're going to have for future outings. Today, once again, we are having a look at the new Starius. This was the Count Dracula from the Scars of Dracula. This was the one quarter scale polyresin statue. Very, very cool. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Starry's releases, there's a whole playlist designated for you. And um, also make sure as well, you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos, maybe just like this, will be coming soon. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.